Hi, everyone. This is Liz from the Wood County Committee on Aging. I am the Program and Outreach Specialist. I am here in Mommy at Clara J's Tea Room. Uh, we are live here today to uh, watch a baking demonstration. So we are thankful to Walker Funeral Homes who sponsored this cooking demonstration for us. And we have Rebecca here from Walker Funeral Homes who is going to talk a little bit about Clara J's. Hello everyone and welcome to Clara J's at 219 at 219 West Wayne Street in Maumee. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Clara J's started 15 years ago um, it, there was no tea room here. Um, as a founder of Clara J's, uh, the, this historic home at 219 became available. And people will say, well, how is it you started a tea room? Well, I was sitting with my mom and sisters in Cleveland one day, and I was sort of between jobs, and they said, well, what are you going to do? And just right out of the blue, I said, well, I think I'm going to start a tea room. Well, when I got back home that weekend, it's sort of like, I guess I better get serious about this. So I started looking into tea rooms and visiting lots of tea rooms and I started collecting, collecting dishes and plates and fun things. And uh, my husband said, well, what if you don't open a tea room? It's like, then we'll just have a big garage sale. But fortunately, after about a year and a half, this house became available. And so the house was purchased by a family member and the tea room came to be. Um, the house here at Clara J's is from, was built in the 18, 1830s. So it's a historic home here in Maumee and um, has housed several other businesses, but obviously never a tea room. But we're thrilled that Clara J's is, is ongoing and the owner today, Gretchen Fairweather, Chef Gretchen, is going to be doing the demonstration and um, she will be happy to um, share some insight about her culinary arts and, and all that sort of thing, and certainly welcome you to Clara J's. Um, Clara was my beloved aunt, and her picture is behind me here, Clara Jessing uh, Keller was her married name, and I named it Clara J's because Aunt Clara went to Baldwin Wallace College in the 1920s. Now we have no idea how she ever got to Baldwin Wallace. I'm sure didn't, she didn't ride a horse, but maybe a train, I don't know. But then she came back um, from Baldwin Wallace and did culinary, she graduated from there with culinary arts program. And when she came back then, she started doing private catering for well-to-do families in Toledo. And so anytime we went to Aunt Claire's, we always got to do some, got to eat something that was fun and different. The first time I remember eating Philadelphia cream cheese was in green jello at Aunt Clara's. So that was kind of my introduction into some culinary things, if you want to call it that. But anyway, Aunt Clara um, loved food. And so when I opened the tea room then, it's sort of like, I got to call this Clara J's. So that's Clara J's is how it came to be. And then let me introduce the chef, um, Chef Gretchen Fairweather. Uh, Gretchen is a graduate of Johnson Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. And Gretchen has, uh, she received a master in teaching degree there, as well as degrees in food service, management, and culinary arts. She's worked in restaurants and hotels from Boston all the way down to Miami. And she's been a chef, a food and beverage manager, and a sous chef. So she's well-rounded in the, in the culinary arts. And after the birth of her son in 2006, she and her husband uh, decided to come back to come to Maumee where she had family and um, so they left there left Rhode Island and then came to Maumee and at that time then she became a full-time professor at Owens Community College and she taught food nutrition hospitality um, through that uh, university uh, since 2007 and her service has always been uh, to students and the community and uh, she's received numerous industry uh, awards, including uh, being named the Maumee Valley Chef Association's Chef of the Year, as well as President's Awards and other um, awards. Um, in, in 2014, uh, Gretchen achieved a de and the designation of Certified Executive Chef from the American Culinary Federation. The CEC is a mark of excellence and distinction in the culinary industry. She came to Clara J's in May of 2017 
And then in November of 2017, she and her husband purchased the building. And then uh, in September, the following year, she took ownership then of Clara Chase. So she is the active chef, owner, and guru of culinary arts at Clara Chase. And so, Gretchen? Thank you, Anne. Um, hello, welcome to Claire J's. Uh, when I was asked to do this, I wasn't quite sure what to do. We talked about doing pumpkin pies and cheesecakes, but I figure a lot of you probably already know how to do that and you've made it. One of the things that I get asked a lot is working with puff pastry because people love the pastries, but it's oftentimes considered very daunting. Uh, so I wanted to make some easy stuff with some puff pastry. Now I did go, um, here at Claire J's, we buy it by the bulk, so we get huge things, but um, I do, do use this one at home as well. Um, and it's in the freezer section at your Kroger, Meyer. It's by the frozen desserts and pies and that sort of thing. So, um, and also it's nice because this one comes with two sheets. And so I will um, let it sit, I'll pull it out of the freezer and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight so that it gets nice and soft. And then this one is, so I'm gonna do at least one for you. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate the ones that I have on the table as well. But while I'm going to let this one, it's still pretty firm, which is good. So I'm going to let these sit out for a bit while I talk about what I'm going to add to um, make your pumpkin. So I'm going to do all pumpkin. You can certainly change it if you wanted to do apples um, or just cream cheese with some sweetener. Um, cranberries are nice as well. You can get blueberry pie filling or whatever kind of pie filling you love. Um, but right now, as you can see behind me at the tea room, we are all about the pumpkin spice, the pumpkin cream, you name it, we're doing pumpkin. Um, so we're doing the pumpkin pinwheels today, and we'll do some silly ones too that are great for Halloween. Um, so the first part, uh, puff pastry, you do want to keep it pretty cold. So mine is still cold, and it's still a little bit firm. But if you start to allow it to get too warm, then the butter starts to melt in between the layers and you don't get those flaky layers like you might like, um, like a croissant. And so we wanna keep it cold. And after I prep them, I'll put them back in the freezer to get it nice and firm. So that way the butter is melting only when we're baking it. It's not melting while we're working with it. Um, and then uh, for your reference then, we're gonna do it at 400 degrees in your oven for 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're playing along right now, you can crank up your oven or save it for later. Uh, so then I have pumpkin. So all I did, I opened a can of pumpkin puree. This is pure pumpkin. Uh, this is actually the Kroger brand. Um, and right now all it is is pumpkin, but I'm gonna add um, a little bit. I'm actually gonna use the pumpkin pie spice and we have a huge one, but maybe you already have one. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, and that sort. And I'm gonna be rather generous with this one. Um, and then we'll do about two teaspoons, I'd say. And then we're gonna add sugar to it as well. But if you buy the pumpkin pie puree that's already seasoned, you don't necessarily need to add seasoning unless you really like this pumpkin pie spice, and then you can do that. And so then I'm gonna add some sugar. It's gonna be nice and sweet and just mix that up. And it's the perfect consistency for what we're doing. As you want it a little firmer than the runny pumpkin that comes directly out of the can so that you can work with it. And then I'm gonna put it in our, um, in pastry bags that I have somewhere. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna put it in a pastry bag to pipe it right into my pastry. If you don't have a pastry bag, Certainly Ziploc bags work just fine and you just cut off the tip to make it a little bit easier. Or even if I'm in a hurry making these, I will simply use um, a spoon and spoon it on. It just looks a little prettier. And that's really what this dish to me is, is making stuff look pretty. That's one of the great things at Claire J's is all the staff really cares a lot about how the food looks um, because we eat with our eyes first before we dive in. So my pumpkin is now in there and I'll leave it um, uncut until I'm ready to work with that. And then the second filling that I like to use, so then it's a pumpkin cream, is ricotta. So this is ricotta cheese. You can certainly use cream cheese, in which case cream cheese, you'd have to wait till it's room temperature. With ricotta, it's already a nice consistency. And then I did add powdered sugar and vanilla to it just to taste um, so it gives a little sweetness. It's a lot similar to then the filling in a cannoli. So it's got that sweetness. 
And I'm gonna add that into my piping bag. Again, you can use a Ziploc bag um, or just spoon it right on. And I'll have these ready. And really, the part that I'm doing now is probably the most work um, when you're doing this. We call it in the culinary industry, your mise en place, which is French for everything in its place. And so you want all your mise en place, which I have here on my tray too. That's probably where I spent most of my time today was my mise en place. Um, and it's really the mark of a good chef is if you have all your mise en place when you start. So we'll see, hopefully I have everything I need. Um, so that's the ricotta. And then I'm gonna have an egg wash. So the egg, all it is is an egg and I beat it really well. And I did put a little bit of warm water in it and that helps loosen up the egg so you can beat it a little bit better. But this is gonna be our glue for our puff pastry. And then the last thing that I put together before coming on here was um, an apricot glaze. And we've been arguing in the kitchen for about a week whether it's apricot or apricot. Um, but, uh, and so all it is is uh, apricot preserves. So I bought smuckers and then um, a little bit of water. I put it in the microwave for maybe 30 seconds just so the water and the preserves. And what you'll see with that is it's gonna give a really nice shine when we're all done. So it looks like a professional product. Um, so I have everything else that I need. I do have the last glaze that we'll do, which is powdered sugar. I might as well just do that now because my hands are gonna get dirty. So this is the very last glaze that we'll do on the very end. Um, and it's just powdered sugar with a little tiny bit of water. Try not to put too much in. Um, Cause you want it to be pretty thick. And you can see that uh, it is pretty thick. So you want it to barely be able to drizzle and that way it'll kind of harden up and stiffen up on your pastry. And that's where you're gonna get that nice little stream across the top. You can see it's nice and thick and that's what I want. Um, the sugar may hydrate a little bit more before I get to use it. So I might just add a little more powdered sugar later, but we'll wait on that. All right, so my pastry's here. It's, when it comes in the box like that, it's pre-floured. So both sides, and I'll typically put the most floured side down so I don't have to worry about it sticking to my cutting board. I do have a little flour here in case it is sticky, but this one's really nicely put together, so I probably won't. So I'm just gonna use a rolling pin to make it just a little bit larger. I'm not giving it a lot of force or a lot of effort. Um, and you wanna be careful to keep it so that you still have a nice square. Um, and as I said with this one, I really like that it's got these, the way they fold it because that's my first mark. One of the tools that I love when I'm working with pastry um, is my um, pizza, pizza cutter. Um, a lot of times we'll refer to it as an Italian French knife because our French knife is one of our favorite tools in the kitchen. And then here's one for cutting pizza. So I'm gonna use the marks that are already scored there from the way it was folded and slice it that way. The other thing that's nice about it, the, I almost called it Italian French knife, um, <laughs> is that it cuts all the way through. Um, with the knife, sometimes you can't quite tell that it's cut all the way through. Now I'm gonna cut it using my best judgment. Of course, I'm being recorded, so it's not gonna be amazing. But try and get three, there we go, yay. Um, so I've got uh, nine pieces of dough, and I'm gonna show three different ways to create um, different pastries. And we call ours the, pie, uh, the pumpkin pinwheel, but uh, many times it might be called a Danish as well, or a cooler or something along those lines. So for the first one I'm gonna do is gonna be the pinwheel. And I'm gonna put one of those on a plate so you can see what I'm doing. My goal is to make this one right here. So I'm going to use my knife, but you could, uh, my pizza cutter, but you could also use a knife. Um, and all you're going to do, and I'll do each one three times so you can see. So I'm cutting into it on all four corners, not all the way in, but just enough so that I'll be able to turn each one. <laughs> so my next step then is going to be to do my egg wash. So the egg wash, again, it was the water and the egg. The egg wash is there to act as my glue. Um, so it's going to help the, the dough stick together when it's baking. Um, but it's also going to give, add a little extra color so that my pastry won't be 
um, very, very white. It'll have a little color to it and toast nicely on the outside. So I've egg washed the whole thing. And now I'm gonna take each, every other corner basically. So I'll say I'm using, it's my right, my right corner. And then I'm gonna take the right corner from this side and from this side and from this side. So now I've made the pinwheel and now I can cut open my ingredients. And so there's my pumpkin. And I'll just pipe a little pumpkin right into the middle of it, like so. So when we're in the kitchen and I'm making, you know, 30 of these, I will do the same task over and over, which you should do as well, even if you're only making a handful of these. But you see, I take the same corner all the way around to create my pinwheel and then pipe my pumpkin in. And I think with this one, I'm gonna add some of the ricotta on top. And again, if you're doing uh, a different fruit, that's fine too. If you're doing apples or cranberry or it's springtime and you wanna make strawberry pinwheels, you could certainly do that. I'm gonna come back with my egg wash and just hit each one of these so that they get a little color as well. And then I can also get a little fancy. I do have um, cinnamon and sugar here and I can add that to it if I so desire. And then these are gonna go on my parchment lined tray. So I'm gonna bring it over. And because it is puff pastry, one of those keywords there is puff. So you wanna make sure you spread them pretty decent. You don't want them right on top of each other or touching. And then these will bake up nice like those there. The next one that I'll show you then, I always call it the window, but it leaves like this little window there for you. So this one I will use a smaller paring knife to get my cuts in there. And what I'm gonna do is the two opposite corners, I'm gonna cut almost to the other side down and then across and then I'll do the exact same thing leaving that one little bit that's not cut and so I'll do it for each one so again we're doing like a little frame cut here and you'll see I'm going to struggle with pulling it apart because I'm using a knife and not the pizza cutter so it doesn't always get all the way down there we And then the next step will be again egg wash because remember we want to glue the dough down so it doesn't puff up. No, we want it to puff up, but so it doesn't puff apart from itself. So egg wash again. And this one lends itself nice to very liquidy ingredients. So if you wanted to do cream cheese or you wanted to do maybe you diced apples and added butter and um, cinnamon to it. That way you don't end up with a lot of the product on the inside, on the outside. So now I'm gonna do my pumpkin before I do my folds. So a little bit there in the middle, and then I'm gonna grab a hold of this side and fold it all the way over to the other side and do the same thing. Oh, let's see really got to work through that dough. There we go. All right. So I'm actually pressing it down a bit because that's going to create that seal so that this will be baking and it'll be puffing up, but it'll keep my pumpkin from spilling out onto my pan. And then I'll go back and do the cream as well. So pull that guy open. And um, you can certainly play with these and do different places uh, for the filling because sometimes I will take the cream filling and instead of putting it on top of there, I'll actually put it right inside here so it's a little bit different flavor on this side, right in this little hole. 
and the ricotta doesn't really run, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And then don't forget your egg wash on the top for a little bit of color. Oh, I didn't add cream to that first one. I need to add some cream. So we'll do the cream right in the middle for this one. There we go. So then those guys, sheet tray. And because even though I'm doing different shapes and sizes for all of these, it's all about the same amount of filling and dough. So I can actually bake them all on one tray. If I was cutting the dough down to different sizes, then I wouldn't wanna, um, wouldn't wanna cook them all in the same one. So then our final one is the silly little mummy. I told you we we're gonna do one silly one. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, we did get the paper eyeball or the candy eyeballs, um, which typically they have at Kroger or whatever. If you're fancy enough to make something like that, go for it. Um, and so I'm gonna start actually by cutting it. So the cut is gonna be all down the one side. I'm just going to do these little, this one's also known as the braid because it looks a lot like a braid, but it's a cheap braid. So we're not actually going to have to learn how to braid to do this. So each one I'll cut down there, down the side. And again, just like the other one, you're not going all the way through the pastry. You're just doing it enough so that it'll be in the center. And then that's where we'll put our ingredients. And I like to do this one since it sort of looks like a mummy with just the cream cheese or the just the ricotta cheese you can certainly do it with cream cheese if you like as well so i've got them cut and the glue that holds it together and then we'll add our ricotta cheese oh this one i've made at home too with chocolate in it it's really really good with chocolate. So now I'm going to pipe right down the middle just a little bit. And if I want to add a little more flavor, I can do my cinnamon and sugar. And so now with this one, we are going to basically just keep doing an overlap. So I'm going to take one piece from one side and press it down. Take the piece from the other side and press it down. And I'll keep doing that. So then the other side and then the other side. So they're really just overlapping. You're not braiding. Um, and we'll keep going. And then the last one tends to be the tricky one only because you want to make sure that you close it off. So the last one, a lot of times then I will kind of cup it around like you're swaddling it. It's a little mummy baby. Um, so you'll end up looking like that and then we're definitely going to want to egg wash it again so that we end up with a nice brown and white mummy. So I'll do the rest of these. Um, of course, because I'm under pressure doing this on Zoom, I forgot a very important part. <laughs> you want the number of stripes to be the same and I just was, you know, cutting at it. So that way you don't end up with an odd number of these little bandages, the, the mummy bandages. So just keep track when you're doing it on either side. If you do six cuts on one side, do six on the other. So then I close it off there. Make sure she's all pinched together. Egg wash. And on my paper lined tray, we'll do the last one. Um, and so the eyes, you could potentially bake them with the eyes on there. However, they kind of get melty. So I guess maybe that's a little creepy. You're making these for a creepy thing. Um, I just like the eyes better when they're, they're clearly visible eyes. Um, but it's a fun treat to add to. Now, I do get the question sometimes about puff pastry. If you can just use that crescent dough that people like so much. And certainly you can. It's not as quality a product as puff pastry might be, um, but it still is decent. So then I have these and I would put them in my refrigerator or freezer um, until the dough is firm again, because it's very floppy right now. Um, now I haven't worked it a lot, so I haven't warmed it and I want the 
the butter to stay in the layers with the flour that's in the dough already so that I don't end up um, with a really melty product where it doesn't puff. And that's our big thing is puff pastry. We want it to puff. So we have those. I'm going to wipe my hands down here. And then I pre-baked some so you can see. Um, so these then are the little window ones. They puffed up nice and tall. And then these are the pinwheels. Um, and then I forgot to mark in the back, don't eat. And two of them have disappeared. Um, it was not my staff. <laughs> so, um, so now we're going to use the apricot glaze that I talked about. Um, and so that is just the apricot preserves with water. And what that's going to end up doing is giving you that like super professional looking product. So, and you're not putting a lot on, just enough. But now you see how it's got that shine, like you see in the magazines and in the pastry cases. And it's just as simple as a little bit of that. I choose apricot partly because it's got that little orange color to it. Um, but the flavor isn't so intense. So you could pick any jam you wanted. If you were doing apple, um, apple filling, then maybe you would decide you wanted to use apple jelly or apple jam. Or if you're using strawberry, you certainly could. Um, but since I was keeping it pumpkin and apricot's a nice flavor that it pairs well with pumpkin, I kept it like that. So now we have them all glazed. I would let the glaze set up for a bit. Um, and so then I can talk more about our other glaze. So this is the glaze that you can see on a couple of them, um, but it just adds that finishing touch and it's not necessary by any means. And I'm gonna add a little more powdered sugar to mine because it's not quite as thick as I wanted it to be. Because you want it to, if it's not thick enough, then it'll hit the pastry and then just slide right down to the, to the paper. And so you really want it, and this is just, I mean, honestly, we're just adding more sugar to an already very sugary thing. It's not necessary, but it certainly adds to the look without a doubt. So now, I went the wrong way and like a little bit more water, just a little. There we go. So what you want it to do is that you can come over here and do it so it looks so professional. So they have a little more of this to it. Um, you could also, like I said, I've done the mummies with chocolate in them and then did chocolate on top as little stripes. And we end up with these super amazing pastries. It's a nice alternative to cookies, I think, or having to make cake or candy. We'll do a little bit on here, and then I'll use that to put a little eyeball on. Oops, oops. One eye, two eyes, and then there's another little mummy full of sweet goodness um these will hold up for uh at least three to four days if they're wrapped tight um you don't you can do the glaze the the apricot glaze ahead of time but the sugar glaze that i put on at the very end that should be when you're serving it to somebody and you could even make them ahead of time like i did pop them in the oven for just a minute to get them warm when they come out, add the sugar glaze to it, uh, just like I did, just judging back and forth. Um, and people, if you, if you can match your puff pastry, people will think that you bought them because a lot of people don't like to use puff pastry because they don't know how. Um, but key facts, or key, key tips for it is chill it. Um, to make sure it's cold before you work with it and then make sure it's cold before you put it into the oven. Um, and that's when we get these big puffy um, items over here. And I know there's something over here that I didn't show, which is um, tiny little pumpkin pies. Also very easy. These were made in a muffin tin and I just cut um, the pieces that you saw. I did those thirds. I cut them in half one more time, sprayed a mini muffin tin and put the pastry down and put my pumpkin pie in. Um, so it's a super easy way to make little mini pumpkin pies and you don't have to worry about who slices it. I know my house I get the small slice and then everybody else gets a big slice. Um, so then they're already pre-portioned as well. And they're easier to travel, I think, than a pie. 
So that is how we work with Puff Pastry here at Claire G's. Um, we use it quite a bit, uh, whether we're wrapping things, and we use it for savory items too. Any one of these we could have done with like a spinach and artichoke spread or we could do it even with some feta cheese or pesto and do something Italian with it. So there's a lot of options to play with puff pastry. Um, and plus it's delicious and it's nothing but butter. So what could be wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. I don't know if there's any questions, if that's something that we can do as mm -hmm. questions, I'm happy to do that to my, the best of my ability. Yes. Does anyone have any questions for Gretchen? I just prompted everybody to unmute if you're okay. He's wanting to chit chat a little bit. Danilda, did you have any questions? Yeah. How many of those do you make a week? Oh, um, sometimes it depends on the flavor. We might make a dozen or we might make a dozen dozen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And we make a lot of savory items with them too. We make a turnover that's, well, I mean, the most popular one is crazy. It's chicken bacon rice. Ooh. Do, you serve, do you serve other things besides uh, the pastry at your tea house? Yes. Um, we have sandwiches and salads and soups. We have two soups every day. Uh, we have about six or eight sandwiches. We have quiche. Um, we also do a, a proper tea that starts with your scones and tea, and then you can cut out a three-tiered tray with flavorings, finger sandwiches, and sweets. Um, that one's very popular. Yes. I, mean, a lot of I know, I know Liz is there. there. Does she have your information, like your address and your hours yes. and all that yes. stuff that she can bring back to Bowling Green? Absolutely. Yes. yes. And I can tell you a little bit. We're on West Wayne in Maumee. Um, 219, it's an old historic home. Um, and then we're open Tuesday through Saturday. We are closed Sunday and Monday. Um, okay. We start serving lunch at 11, Tuesday through Saturday, and we finish up around two. And then in December, we're actually open on Sundays as well. And I'll, oh, I'll, make, sure, I'll, I'll make sure to post all of that information with the video, Danelda. You do three meals a day? No. no. Um, <laughs> we uh we can do lunches or proper teas or oh sweet. okay mm -hmm. i see gotcha one Thank day when, one day Thank when we get much. back to doing trips um when things look a little bit more normal we're gonna have to absolutely make it up your oh, way oh yes that sounds like uh, yeah. such a perfect afternoon yes, yeah it would be great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be terrific. julie any questions from you Oh, do you have like gift certificates for people to go dine there? Absolutely, yeah. We can make them out for any any amount that you'd like. You yeah, because my daughter and her kids have high tea almost every day, but it would be nice for them to go out. Like, and her birthday's coming up in November, so. Yeah, that would be amazing. We would love that. That would be something different because she buys whatever she wants for herself, so. Sure, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much, Gretchen and Rebecca, um, for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for logging on. Have a great day. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.